Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Breaking: It's official. California has done it. Will happen in November. California has managed to outdo itself yet again, choosing to honor the needs of their illegal alien population over that of their American tax-paying citizenry. California's General Assembly has just passed a bill making them the first state to extend Medicaid coverage to immigrants, regardless of immigration status. The bill is known as AB 2965 and it will eliminate the legal residency requirements currently present in California's Medicaid program known as MediCalifornia it passed the Democratic-controlled Assembly 33-21. to The state has already done away with residency requirements for individuals younger than the age of 19. The Democratic-controlled Assembly 33-21. to According to California's Legislative Analyst's Office, offering this level of full-cost coverage to these individuals would cost California taxpayers approximately $3 billion for just the 2018-2019 fiscal year. The bill is set to be presented to the state Senate and they are expected to pass the proposal and present to Governor Jerry Brown for signature. Proponents of the bill state their support due to inconsistent access to care for illegal aliens and a significant reliance on walk-in or community clinics and emergency rooms. Alma Syed is the Deputy Director of Programs and Counsel for the California Immigrant Policy Center and she states, that's not the same as having a general practitioner or internist you see regularly. This would be a systematic way to keep communities healthy. Opponents of the bill question why illegal aliens should receive such benefits at taxpayer expense and if illegal individuals will flock to California in order to take advantage of such a benefit. They also wonder just how long the state can bear such a significant financial burden without federal subsidy. Opponents of the bill have questioned the necessity of the bill, believing that this is simply a political maneuver on the part of liberal, open borders politicians in California. They have even suggested that this may be a purposeful overloading of the system in an effort to force universal state-run healthcare much like what is found currently in the United Kingdom and other parts of Europe. A place where medical care is rationed out to the elite and very wealthy first and the weak, handicapped, and elderly are weeded out as unnecessary. 23-month-old Alfie Evans of Merseyside, England suffered under this sort of care as did his family. Former Senator Ron Paul, himself a physician, raged at a system that would justify such horror as baby Alfie and his family were subjected to. Paul states, while the official cause of death was a degenerative brain disease, Alfie may have been murdered by the British health system and the British High Court. Doctors at the hospital treating Alfie decided to remove his life support, against the wishes of Alfie's parents. The High Court not only upheld the doctor's authority to override the parents' wishes, it refused to allow the parents to take Alfie abroad for treatment. In upholding the government's authority to substitute its judgment for that of Alfie's parents, the High Court is following in the footsteps of authoritarians throughout history. Ever since Plato, supporters of big government have sought to put government in charge of raising children. The authoritarianism of a system where experts can override parents is underscored by a police warning that they were monitoring social media posts regarding Alfie. Alfie's case is not just an example of the dangers of allowing government to usurp parental authority or the failures of socialized medicine. It shows the logical result of the widespread acceptance of the idea that rights are mere privileges bestowed by government. It follows from this idea that rights can be taken away whenever demanded by government officials or the popular will. Of course, most Western politicians deny they believe rights come from government. They instead claim that government must place reasonable limits on rights to advance important policy goals such as limiting the right to free speech to protect certain groups from hate speech, or limiting property rights to promote economic equality. But, a right by its very nature cannot be limited or abolished and still be a right. This disdain for a true understanding of rights is found among both liberals and conservatives. Both support a welfare warfare state funded via the theft of income taxes and the indirect theft of inflation. Both support jailing people for non-violent actions like drinking raw milk. Many politicians, regardless of ideology, support restrictions on parental rights such as mandatory vaccination laws. While claiming to support the right to life, most modern liberals not only support legalized abortion, they want to force pro-lifers to fund abortion providers. Adding to that issue, earlier this year Steve Wesley, former California controller and CalPERS board member, manager of the largest public pension fund in the U.S., made a stunning admission. Wesley revealed that $350 billion California Public Employees Retirement System, CalPERS, is nearly insolvent making either reform or bailout necessary in the very near future. The situation recently came to light when the $350 billion California Public Employees Retirement System, CalPERS, 
made a relatively small change in its amortization policy. Specifically, the CalPERS board voted to change the period for recouping future investment losses from 30 years to 20 years. While on paper this may not sound like much, in reality this would force the California state government along with thousands of local governments and school districts to significantly increase their mandatory contributions to the massive trust fund in an effort to keep it solvent and funded. Many California cities are already complaining of double-digit increases in CalPERS payments are driving municipal budgets to insolvency and there will be no bailout because America's largest public pension fund itself is on the brink. The CalPERS system was once more than 100% funded, yet now has scarcely two-thirds of what it would need to fully cover all of the pension promises to current and future retirees, under the assumption that investment earnings target a minimum of 7% per year. The problem is many believe this is entirely too optimistic. Over the past decade, approximately 5 million people have moved away from California. One does not have to look far to wonder why. This combined with crumbling infrastructure, a massive tax burden for residents boasting the highest income tax in the entire nation, and earthquakes, annual wildfires, rampant homelessness, and a fleeing tax-paying populace amongst other significant issues, and California just continues to add fuel to the fire to hasten the eventual collapse. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.